Okay, so in this video, what we're looking at is the recursion and financial modeling section of the NHT um, exam one in from 2018 for further maths. So, <clears throat> got here question 17 first three lines of a amortization table, I can never say that word properly, for reducing balance line as shown below. And so, what you're after here is this, this part here, you're after that principal reduction. As we can see for this one here, it's basically your, your, your balance for zero when you start off and balance at one and that gives your principal reduction for repayment number one so when we do repayment number two we're going to go that payment minus that one okay sort of an easy way if you want to think about it is when you do it you can get rid of 249 and just look at the 846.67 and um, subtract the 692.85 from that Whichever way, it's up, don't, either way you're going to get the right answer. And that is what your principal reduction is going to be for repayment number two. Okay. So in this one here, consider the recurrence relation relation below. Which of the term which of the which term of the sequence generated by this recurrence relation is the first to be negative? So what you need to do is use your calculator to work this out. It's probably the easiest way. So what I'm going to show you is um, a way you can do that easily. <clears throat> so this is basically something I prepared earlier. And basically when you calculate it, you can just type 12, oops, press here, press enter. That's basically, in this case, your B0. And then it doesn't show here, but when I've typed this in my calculator, for this part here, I've gone two, well, times with the dot, um, answer, okay? because that picks up this number here minus 14 and I'll just go enter 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 because as you can see that 10 that we got for the, there goes into where the answer would go so it's just picking that up so basically you're going to hit that's b1 b2 b3 and so your answer is c okay now Cheryl invested 175,000 in, into an annuity. <clears throat> Investment earns interest at a rate of 4.8% per annum, compounding quarterly. So interest rate is 4.8. This is your um, payments per year, it equals four. Immediately after interest has been added to the account, she withdraws a payment of three and a half. So this is the that part, so that's fine. That's not gonna help you. That's not gonna help you because they're all the same. What you've got to look at is when you're doing an annuity like this, so um, we've got to work out what the recurrence relation is after end quarters. Now, in an annuity, this part here is increasing and then you take money out. Okay, so it increases and you take money out. All right, so in that case, let's get rid of these. These two are going to be incorrect because what we want in that part, we want R to be basically one plus R over 100, all right? Um, and so what we need to do here is we need to look at our R. So we're gonna go one plus, and our R was 4.8, okay? But our payments, so remember R is um, the interest rate per payment period. So that's gonna be divided by four, give us 100, divided by 100 I mean. And that's going to give us 1.012. Okay. So that means our answer in this case is going to be D. All right. So next question. Question 20. The value of the photo of a photocopy is depreciated using a unit cost method. Uh, which one of the following graphs should could show the value of the photocopies that depreciate. So let's have a look at them. So I've got a linear, linear, um, non-linear. So let's go linear, linear. Uh, let's actually, let's quickly do that again. So that's gonna be linear. Let's go negative, positive, non-linear, non-linear, and just horizontal. Okay, depreciation, can't be that, can't be horizontal, so we can get rid of that. D 
depreciation can't be increasing so it can't be that it's depreciation but when we're talking about um, unit costs so unit costs and flat rate are always going to be negative so it can't be that because that's a non-linear and in this case um, C is going positive so it can't be that so the answer is going to be A all right so let's look at next question an amount of money is deposited into an account that earns compound interest. Which combination of interest rate and compounding period has the largest effective interest rate? Now, in this one, you probably can get rid of A, B, and C because we're looking to work out what's got the largest effective interest rate. These are 3.7, and those two, the bottom two, are 3.8. Okay, but there's a way we can quickly check that as well. Sorry, I didn't realize there was a pause going on there. So I was moving something into the thing. So my apologies on that. Um, so what you can actually do here is use a function in your calculator called um, F, it's effective interest rate. You can find that on your thing or type in F, EFF. You put in your interest rate, you put in the number of payments per year, and then you just press enter. And as you can see, 3.76, 3.7, so that one's higher than the next one. Then the third one, it's 3.75, so that's out. Then we get to, so this is, um, a, oops, this is A, B, C, D, E. And we can see that this is one where we're getting our biggest number, so our answer is going to be D. You can quickly do that, or you can just sort of use your thing. So, Effective interest rate um, more monthly, so it's 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 more likely. So you could probably sort of guess that one as well if you wanted, but good way to check is to do what I just did then. So question twenty two. Okay, Emir invested some money in a perpetuity from which he receives a monthly payment of five twenty five. The perpetuity pays interest at a rate of annual rate of four point two paid monthly. Okay. Um, how much did Emir invest in his perpetuity? Okay, so basically in this case, we're using the fact that D equals in for perpetuity V0 R over 100. All right, so in this case, we know what the payment is. That's our D, all right? That's our um, R and that is our payments per year, okay? Um, and remember, R is going to be what that interest rate is, payments per year. All right. So what we can do here is, so in this case, let's highlight it. Let's highlight them in yellow again. I've got R, so I've got that and that part. Okay. And I've got D. So I just need to solve for V0. Remember, that's going to be 12. All right. So literally, you can rearrange it if you want to, or you can just put in your calculator and go solve um, 525 equals V0 times, and it was 4.2 divided by 12, okay? Um, and divide that all by 100. Now, in your calculator, you might not put V0, you just put, might put V, but I'm just putting that there for say I'll say now you get a v0 equals 150,000 okay and so that's e and your investment earns interest at a rate of 3.8 percent per annum compounding monthly so initially invested 85,000 will add monthly payments of 1500 the values of the investment will first exceed 95,000 after Okay, so after, and we've got our selection there. So what I've moved in here is the way I look doing this. 
So basically, I did similar to what I did in the, one of the earlier questions. I just made our, this is basically our, we're going to call it here, we'll call it V0. Let's pick a, pick a red. That's going to be V0. Okay. So I make 85,000 out, out, basically our answer. That's what that is. And that's what that is, because that's taken it from here like that. It's just a little way you can use your thing. Um, okay, so I just pressed, put that in, put enter, and that's V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6. So when will it first exceed 95,000? Um, there. So in that case, our answer is going to be B. Okay, now I'm just going to um, wipe off these and move it out. I'm going to pause it and do that so I can do question 24. Okay, in this one, Indira borrowed 29,000 to buy a car and was charged interest at the rate of 12.5% per annum. Okay, so our R is there, compounding monthly, PPY equals 12. For the first year alone, she monthly made monthly repayments of 425. Okay, so that's our PMT for the first year, and this is our PMT for the second year. So I'm going to call it year one, year two. Keep in mind at the moment, this is how much he paid for a year. So if I do that, it's if I multiply that by, oops, that's how much he paid that year. Okay, and in that second, how much he paid that year. If I work out those two numbers and add them together, so I add those two together, let's actually... Put it like this. That's going to equal eleven thousand one hundred. Okay, that's just how much she paid paid into the bank. All right. So that's why I just we'll keep that. And we'll come back to that in a moment. So we're, now we what to, to work out. We will need, what we need to do next. We're going to need to use finance solver. Okay. So I'm going to bring in um, some already calculated things to show what 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 I did, and then we can work through that. Okay, so what I've done here, this here is year one, and this is year two. Okay, so what you're looking for in year one, so I've got my N is 12, 12.5%. My future value in this case is, and my present value, sorry, is 29,000. Put that in. My payment, remember negative, because you paid it into the bank. It's coming out of your bank account. And I get a final value of 27,000, okay? Now, what I then do, and I think I might have stuffed that up a little bit. Um, so yes, I did make a little mistake, and the reason I wanted to double check that was because I don't want you to make the same mistake in the exam. That should be, that shouldn't be there, because that's what the, it's in the bank what the final value is and what you still owe would be negative. The absolute values are the same in this case, but the, the sign there. So make sure you do the right thing. So th that number goes there, but you take the negative out. I thought I had, and even more importantly, I don't know why, what I was thinking, that should have a negative in there, so negative 500. I'm surprised this actually worked out. Um, and so what, you, what happens is that you'll get um, an answer of 24,000 left over. Okay. Still can't get over the mistakes I made on that one. But I got the right, the right, num right, right number again. So move past that. Okay. So what you need to do is to say what, what you've got here, it's 29, remember, because that's what you started with. And after two years, that's how much you've paid down the principal. Okay. So you've paid the principal down by for uh, you know, four thousand two hundred eighty-five. So, how much interest have you paid? Well, you've paid one um, eleven thousand one hundred. That's how much money you've paid. It's gone down. Your your inter your principal's gone down by four two eight five. Okay. So what you'll get here is. Um, Six eight one five. That's how much you would get. 
And the closest value, because it's in terms of $100, is D. So your answer in this case would be D. Okay, thank you.